ESO, cioè dell'European Section of uh, Oncological Urology, che sarebbe diciamo, la nostra corrispettiva europea, è una tradizione ormai consolidata, questo credo sia il quarto anno che c'è una ESO Lecture durante il congresso e il nostro ospite odierno è Alexander Govorov, che è il direttore del Dipartimento di Urologia della Università Statale di Mosca. L'argomento è legato al carcinoma incidentale di prostata riscontrato all'autopsia, è uno studio internazionale con eh, una revisione centrale della patologia. Tutti noi sappiamo del problema dell'incidenza del carcinoma prostatico nei pezzi istologici di cistectomia, questa è un'altra maniera, credo, piuttosto qualificata di considerare il problema. Thanks much to be here with us and you can go. Dear chairman, ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, good afternoon. Uh, I have to say that I know and I understand quite well why the people is leaving. Today Italy will play versus Croatia in one hour. So it's a very important event and understand that people need to find the right place, nice TV, to take some beer, to be prepared. So I excuse everyone who is leaving. Uh, may I ask to run my presentation, please? This is a demand to a technical staff. Thank you very much. Again, it's a, a, great, a great honor for me uh, uh, to be here. And uh, I have, I try to change the slide. I'm using the left button of the mouse, but it doesn't work at the moment. Ci può aiutare a verificare il funzionamento delle slide? I'm sorry for this technical issue. It was working properly this morning. Once again, I have to say thank you very much for uh, inviting me here. This is a wrong image, please go back. Or maybe I will do it myself. I have to say special thanks to Professor Vincenzo Altieri uh, for this kind invitation and special thanks to Professor Maurizio Brausi, who is the chairman of the ESU. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar, uh, I have to say that ESOU means the EU section of oncological urology. This is a section of the EU which has uh, the meeting once a year, and the next ESOU meeting will take, take place uh, here in Italy next January in Rome, so we invite uh, all of you to participate. It's my great pleasure to give this lecture on behalf of the ESOU, EU section of oncological urology, And uh, as uh, Professor Vincenzo Altieri told, I am uh, from Russia, from Moscow. This is a quite a remote place from here. This is what people was thinking about Russia some time ago with uh, bears, vodka, caviar, Gagarin, etc., etc. This is what people usually think now uh, with Putin, Medvedev, yachts, petrol, uh, some very rich people buying football clubs. In fact, truth is somewhere in between. And uh, this is a big, uh, indeed, international trial which was done with a group of authors from different countries. Uh, and it was a uh, prospective comparative international study with Central Pathology Review. What was the background of this? Randomized trial on prostate cancer screening have outlined the risks of overdiagnosis and overtreatment of latent cancers. We all know that there is a discrepancy between prostate cancer incidence and mortality, and mainly thanks to uh, ERSPC, PLCO, and all these big trials. Uh, many of you know this wonderful paper in a European uh, urology journal, uh, the paper about international variation in prostate cancer incidence and mortality rates, and the conclusion of this uh, nice manuscript says that prostate cancer incidence rates increased in nearly all countries considered in the analysis except in a few high-income countries. 
Uh, again, significant geographical differences in prostate cancer incidence and mortality exist, being supposedly low among a Asian men compared to Caucasians. And the autopsy data are limited and often based on studies performed in 1980s or even before. Finally, the improved knowledge of prostate cancer on autopsy is a key for prostate cancer management. When we start to discuss autopsy studies in urology, many of us remember the paper by Sucker and co-authors. This study was done in the United States in Detroit roughly 20 years ago. The authors evaluated the prostate cancer prevalence in different age groups, and they have showed the median prostate cancer prevalence of 36% being a little bit different with latent prostate cancer and clinically significant prostate cancer. Ten years later, Sanchez Chapado uh, evaluated prevalence of prostate cancer and prosthetic intraepithelial neoplasia in Caucasian Mediterranean males. It was also an autopsy study which was done in Spain, but the author suggested that the results of the study would be representative of all the Mediterranean population which means Italian population as well at this, at this time. The study included 162 uh, um, uh, cases. Uh, this is men were from 20 to 80 years. And uh, it has been shown that there is a gradual increase in prostate cancer incidence from 3.5% at, at the age from 20 to 30 to 33% at the age from 70 to 80. The increase of high-grade PIN cases was also gradual. Uh, the more advanced was the age, the more frequently the high-grade PIN was found. Remarkably, 77% of prostate cancer cases were found in peripheral zone of prosthetic glands. Uh, SOS and co-authors evaluated the prevalence of prostate carcinoma and its precursors in Hungary. In this trial, the prostate cancer prevalence was 38.8% quite similar to the data from the United States from Detroit. Remarkably, uh, in patients older than 80 years old, prostate cancer was found in 86% of cases. And at the same age, high-grade PIN was detected in 60% of cases. Uh, authors from the United States compared the incidence of latent prostate cancer detected at autopsy before and after the PSA era. They have compared two time periods in the same institution, from 1955 to 1960, and then from 1991 to 2001. And they have shown that there is the decreased autopsy rates almost threefold since 40 years. The largest decrease was noted in men older than 70 years, so the authors have questioned the significance of many of clinically detected tumors at that time. The other study, also done in the United States uh, in 2008, evaluated the prevalence of incidental prostate cancer in the general population. It was a study of healthy donor org organs. Uh, 340 prostates were uh, included. Prostate cancer was a rare event in men younger than 40 years old, only 0.5%. In total, prostate cancer uh, together or separately with high-grade PIN was found in 12% of cases. Although uh, any information on prostate cancer screening was available in these men, a different uh, methodolog methodologically done study was presented by Haas and co authors. It was a study evaluating uh, sensitivity of needle biopsies uh, using autopsy prostates. What was interesting for us in this study that out of 164 cases, prostate cancer was found in 29% of cases, and roughly 50-50% uh, of tumors were considered to be clinically significant and 50% clinically insignificant. Uh, continuing this work, the same group of authors evaluated saturation biopsies on autopsy pr prostate, and again, the prostate cancer prevalence here was 25% of the whole studied population. 73% of all foci were localized in the peripheral zone of the prostate. Summarizing all these trials, uh, Haas and co-authors published a nice review about the perspectives from the autopsy studies worldwide and have made several conclusions based on autopsy material. They have concluded that the prevalence of prostate cancer is highest in American men of Caucasian and African origin, that prostate cancer is identified at a much younger age than it would be expected based on incidence data, 
that most men in the older age group are usually affected. Uh, they concluded that some prostate cancer may pass through a period of latency of up to 15 to 20 years before the detection. It's uncertain if this is true for aggressive or high-grade prostate cancer. And the most important conclusion was that the prevalence of prostate cancer must be established to predict the expected incidence and to plan rational treatment and detection strategies. So keeping all this in mind, the aim of our study was to examine the prevalence of prostate cancer and its precursor lesions in Caucasian and Asian men aged from 20 to 80 years across different continents. We have chosen the Caucasian population in Russia for this with uh, likely sun exposure and high fat diet, but without widespread PSA screening. Uh, autopsy data in Western countries like in North America and Europe would have been heavily contaminated due to opportunistic PSA screening. And we know as well that screening of prostate cancer in Japan is uncommon as well. In this study, uh, prostate glands were prospectively obtained using the same methodology during autopsy from men who died from other causes than prostate cancer in Moscow and in Tokyo from 2008 to 2011. So it was quite a long study, not like a three months brainstorm study. Prostates were removed unblocked with the seminal vesicles within one day of death and immediately injected with buffered formalin and then they were analyzed in total and all the prostates were examined by an experienced urologist in Toronto. Many of you know him, this is Theo van der Kwast. The originality of this study lies in its prospective and simultaneous nature, in standardized methodology for obtaining and preserving prostate glands and centralized meticulous pathology grading and staging. What were the, our results? Uh, at this image, you may see this nice prostate which was removed during radical prostatectomy, either open, either robotic. The true story in real life that pathologists, they remove prostates in a different way. They usually tend to cut seminal vesicles. Sometimes they tend to cut uh, apical, part, apical part of the prostate. Sometimes they leave some fat tissue on the prostate, so uh, members and mem staff of the department had to go to the pathology department many, many times to uh, instruct pathologists how to do it, and uh, sometimes to remove these glands ourselves. It was challenging, I have to say you. Comparing uh, full cohorts between, for example, Japan and Russia, you may see that the median age of Japanese population was a little bit higher, 72 years, the median age of Russian population was 62 years. This difference was statistically significant, and there was a statistically significant difference in prostate weight, prostate volume. In Japanese men, it was 28 cc. In Russian men, it was uh, 35 cc. Uh, we have included in total 298 cases, and overall, 37% of cases have evidence of prostate cancer there was no statistically significant difference in the percentage of prostate cancer between Asian and Caucasian men with 35%, 37%. Statistically, it was the same. Uh, at this graph, you may see the age distribution of prostate cancer cases found with uh, almost no cases uh, in uh, men younger than 30 years, although the number of events here was small, and the largest number was found uh, as expected in men older than 80 years old. Analyzing the age distribution in Russia and in Japan, here you see the reflection of the fact that patients from the Japan, they were older, so, uh, so the vast majority of cancers in Japan were found in this older age group. Uh, Coming back again to this data, uh, the prostates from the Asian group were from a significant, significantly older men, and of course, this should be factored in interpretation of finding that the prostate cancer in the Asian group were significantly more often, Gleason score at least seven or more. Here is the distribution of Gleason score in uh, Russian prostates and in Japanese prostates. And you may see that overall, 28% of prostate cancers were Gleason 7 or higher. There were, there were significantly more high-grade prostate cancer in Asian men with 44% compared to Caucasian men. 
with 23% of cancers being less than seven or more. Uh, some patients had uh, extra prosthetic uh, extension, not so many, but uh, keeping in mind the whole number of cases, it was about 10% of all cases. I have to stress once again that these were men who died with no history of urological diseases in the past. Um, we have analyzed the distribution of prostate cancer foci and overall 72% of prostate cancers were unifocal. There was no significant difference in number of cancer foci between Asian and Caucasian men. This difference was not statistically significant. Analyzing the tumor overall zone location, half of all cases were found in peripheral zone of the prostates. 17% uh, of cases were localized both in the peripheral and transition, transition zone of the prostates, and one-fifth of cases were found only in the transition zone of the prostate. The analysis of the total tumor volume was also done. Um, it was, um, there, uh, there was an analysis comparing Gleason score distribution and total tumor volume as well. Additional findings of this trial um, have uh, found that clinically significant prostate cancer, according to Epstein criteria, was found in 30% of Caucasian men and in 51% on Asian men. High-grade PIN was found respectively in 31% of cases and 39% of cases, although this difference in frequency of high-grade PIN was not statistically significant. Uh, we did some logistic regression analysis and there was no correlation of prostate cancer with race. Uh, there was some correlation of prostate cancer with age and race. And there was again um, a link uh, when analyzing prostate cancer with age and prostate weight. There was a correlation of finding a Gleason score of seven or more with race but once model was controlled for difference in age between Asian and Caucasian group, race was no longer a significant predictor of Gleason score of at least seven. In conclusion, uh, prostate cancer was found on autopsy in a similar and high proportion of Russian Caucasians and Japanese Asian men. Over 40% of cancers were Gleason seven or more in Japanese and nearly 25% of Russian Caucasian men and over 10% of all out of tumors were extra prosthetic. Results in Caucasians are very much in line with data from Detroit, uh, I mean incidence, listen score, etc. At least one third of prostate cancer cases of autopsy were clinically significant according to Epstein criteria. And finally, our results raise questions about previous assumptions related to prostate cancer among Asians and the notion of significant versus insignificant cancers. I have to say you, you once again, thank you very much for your attention, and I wish Italian team to win today. Thank you. Alexander is stato molto uh, rapido, ha guadagnato un quarto d'ora sul uh, suo tempo. Eh, le letture magistrali non vanno discusse per definizione, ma la Siuro discute tutto. C'è qualche domanda? Dr. Scattoni. You have shown a difference between uh, the two population about the grade of the tumor. What do you think this, this difference is due to uh, just a uh, ration uh, uh, or uh, do you think about uh, um, diet or something else that may have an impact on it? You know, we, we usually expect that um, uh, people from Japan, uh, from China, they have a good diet. So we usually expect that they, they should have, um, you know, good, good tumors, not, not so many high-grade cancers. In this, in this trial, uh, Japanese men had more high-grade cancers, and the only uh, explanation for us is the older age of this population analyzed. Professor Marbega. very important study because it basically refutes all of our ideas about dietary chemo prevention. It basically just shows that the more PSA screening you have, the more you find, but basically all men seem to have very similar 
um, oncology and development of prostate cancer. And that's why I think it is important. It's especially important for our Asian colleagues because they always say, well, we don't have it. And Japan has a very sophisticated medicine. So I really think this is a very important trial. And again, I think the grade is age-related. If you do a multivariate analysis, you should be able to separate that out. Hopefully, there is no task force preventive services in Japan yet. Prego. Possiamo dare il microfono a quel collega? Sicura? Ah, allora prima San Severino. Uh, first of all, um, do you have any information about uh, um, family history of the two racial groups? And second, I was a little bit surprised about the, the very high uh, percentage of uh, unifocal lesions. Do you have any explanation for that? No, we don't have any information about family history of prostate cancer in this man. Uh, we were also surprised to find 72% of cancers being unifocal. So maybe uh, we, may, we may do this uh, small conclusion saying that usually that the vast majority of latent prostate cancer, they are unifocal. Uh, congratulations for your presentation. Uh, I'm not sure if you mentioned that, but uh, was there anybody on uh, dutasteride or finasteride in uh, cancer group or non-cancer group? Or do you have any data? Uh, these patients, they had no urological diseases in the past. No BPH, according at least to their medical charts. Altri dubbi, altre domande? No. Allora, thanks much. Thank you very much.